Zhao Wenduo, a 21st century architectural designer with exceptional martial arts skills. During an on dot site survey, an accident occurred and a worker stumbled and fell downstairs to save them. Reborn into the mid 1980s parallel world, she became the third girl of the Zhao family with the same surname. In this era known as the Golden Age by later generations, hunting, buying mines, enclosure, doing business to make money, and running hard with their families towards the road of wealth fragment one. Zhao's elder sister and scumbag had just filed for divorce when they were forced to marry by a little fresh meat. Little Fresh Meat's mother didn't even think of it, she just thought that marrying a second married peasant girl based on her own economic background would be a piece of cake. This marriage is firmly established and guaranteed. On the day of delivering the dowry, coinciding with an event organized by the Golden Jewelry Company, the third wife of the Zhao family gave her two large boxes of jewelry. Xiao Xianro said to his mother, I forgot to tell you that their family is engaged in jewelry and they have opened a gold mine before. In an instant, the three gold I bought from here two days ago in my hand no longer smells good. Keywords of the novel Back to 80, starting from mining gold without pop-ups, back to 80, starting from mining gold, download the complete TXT collection, back to 80, starting from mining gold, read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Fighting you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Fighting the Winter of This Year came earlier than usual. Just as winter approached, there was a heavy snowfall with goose feathers. When the snow stopped, it measured to be over a foot thick, and with just one step, it became a snowy den. In winter, the sun sets early and before 6 o'clock, it is already dark. Zhao Wendo spent half a day chopping firewood on the mountain and when he got off the east mountain, he turned into the village. From a distance of more than ten meters from home, he heard a commotion. Seven or eight villagers stood outside the half-person high wall, and the road leading to the courtyard was tightly blocked by onlookers. Let's go, let's go. Zhao Wendo's face darkened as he hesitated to block the crowd. These people were looking at the excitement when they were suddenly pushed away and about to start cursing who didn't have eyes. Didn't you see anyone standing there? Squeezing inside, they turned around and saw a 11 or 12 year old girl with a long face and a knife flying in her cold eyes. Oh, it's the three girls who have returned, all shining brightly. Zhao Wendo dragged the firewood and swept out a path. In the middle of the yard, her mother had a big belly inserted into her waist, cursing at the tall and thin woman standing across from her, Your mouth is like a septic tank. The things you spray out are so smelly that even dogs can't smell them. If you weren't fooling around, how could that kind of thing be spread? The tall and thin woman twisted her head as if feeling guilty. Zhao Wen suddenly recognized that this was Ding Meifeng, the wife of the village accountant Wang Chunmao. This woman had a nickname called the Dou and was usually a talkative woman who loved to talk to Zhang's parents and the Li family. Li Tsuasian, don't wrongly accuse a good person. Ding Meifeng argued forcefully, I didn't say anything. Your second daughter fainted at the entrance of the village when she came back. Many people saw her mouth on someone else's body at that time. Who can control what they want to say? Why do you have to rely on me? If you don't want to admit it yet, then what were you fooling around outside the gate earlier? Don't tell me that you were a dog's butt and the fart you let out can still be stuffed back. If it weren't for hearing those unpleasant words in the yard, Li Tsuasian wouldn't have run out and pulled the loudspeaker in. Ding Meifeng's face turned red and white as she saw her tail being grabbed. She was speechless and could no longer argue, so she decided not to deny it. If she wanted to embarrass herself, everyone should throw it together, so she decided to break her skin. After a moment of relief, he snorted and said, the things I said were also well-intentioned. It's hard to say that such a thing happened in this big winter. You, as a mother, are afraid of being known to cover up. You didn't take the girl to the hospital to see her, and even cruelly asked her to go to work. I, as an outsider, can't bear to see it. I just said these two words, and when you heard me, 
it pulled me into the yard and scolded me relentlessly for so long Li Tsuasian was so angry at her behavior that she spat on her and said, don't hit my girl with a bucket of feces. I'll tell you about this and that, Ding Meifeng. There's nothing wrong with it. If you continue to spread rumors, I'll tell you that broken mouth. Am I spreading rumors? Humph, come on, Li Tsuasian. Yesterday, someone saw your second daughter being beaten down and bleeding. Don't cover up anymore. At this point, everyone knows that your second daughter has been beaten up by Wu Saner on the street. What are you pretending to be? You. My girl didn't. This kind of thing is not easy to say, and in front of so many people, Li Tsuasian became angry and couldn't find words to deal with it. How should she explain, saying that the blood was not caused by that? It was revealed by the girl during the month. It's hard to tell outsiders about the private matters of my daughter's family. Most of the people in the yard are old men, so I can't handle it. Moreover, how many people can believe it once it is said? Some people spontaneously believe that Ding Meifeng has revealed the truth with the phrase Li Tsuasian. Yesterday, the second daughter of the Zhao family was indeed cleared by someone, otherwise why wouldn't she come out to prove it? But without thinking about it, this innocence cannot be proven. Another girl's family, being talked about like this, how could they have the face to stand in front of so many people, not hiding in the corner and crying would be good. In fact, at this moment, Zhao Wenlan, the second daughter of the Zhao family, was indeed hiding inside the house, crying uncontrollably. The eldest girl Zhao Wenying and the youngest four girls Zhao Wennan stood next to her, not knowing how to persuade her, just anxiously glancing at the movements outside from time to time. As for the only male in this family, Zhao Mingyu, he couldn't even count on him. In front of so many villagers, he didn't dare to say a word too loudly. He squatted at the door, feeling embarrassed and turned his head away, sighing in sorrow. At this point in the matter, it is obvious that nothing is worth mentioning. Lack of language and inability to refute, there is no better way besides facing various eyes. It's really frustrating to find it difficult to prove something that hasn't happened yet. Whispers began to ring from all around the yard, with people in groups of three bowing their heads to discuss the true nature of this matter. There are those who sympathize and show mercy, as well as those who mock and joke, and there are always those who say anything at once. Ding Meifeng, who had previously been scolded and lost face in front of everyone, finally regained her composure. She raised her chin and looked around with a smile, her proud expression undisguised. Li Tsuasian was so angry that she was about to faint. She propped up her back and gasped for breath wondering who could stand up and say a fair word for her and her second daughter at the moment. Her mind wandered around but couldn't think of a suitable person. As the villagers were discussing and the Zhao family didn't have a suitable explanation, when the matter was about to be determined, they heard a cold and crisp voice. Mom, have you cooked yet? I'm hungry. With Zhao Wendo's voice, the focus of attention on the people around Ding Meifeng and Li Tsuasian finally came to their senses. They saw the little girl standing there with a wooden face and a straight face, her cold and indifferent appearance as if all the people around her had turned into air, completely oblivious to her. Li Tsuasian's chaotic mind turned into a paste, and the cold mom call made her feel like she had eaten a small bean popsicle in her mouth during the dog days of summer, and suddenly became clear-headed. Miss San, you're back. Li Tsuasian didn't consider anything else for a moment. Zhao Wendo is usually very persistent about food and food, and today he has been chopping firewood on the mountain for a whole day. He must be hungry now, so he instinctively said, I'll let your elder sister cook. As soon as he finished speaking, his face stretched out as if he had finished his sentence. When he finished his meal, he knew that something so big had happened to him. You didn't see that something had happened to him, where else has the thought to eat? Li Tsuasian was about to shout out loud, but then she realized that it was not quite right. The courtyard was full of people, and one of those words could be heard just now. These three girls have obviously been back for quite some time, but she didn't pay attention to their arguments with Ding Meifeng. 
both sides are fighting like this. As a girl from the Zhao family, she should not only be anxious and angry, but at least ask what's going on. What is the meaning behind these eight strokes that cannot be hit? Zhao Wendo didn't give her the opportunity to question with suspicion. He just watched as if no one was around and picked up the rabbit from the bundle of firewood behind her. He raised his hand and raised it to Li Tsuasian, saying, Mom, I went up the mountain to chop firewood and beat a rabbit. I stewed it tonight. Ah. Oh, good. Li Tsuasian, who was still in a forced state the previous second, was obviously not in a state of mind. She was unable to adapt to her daughter's topic of wandering outside the battle for a while, and the sentence that burst out from this single word can be imagined that her brain is still in a state of sudden interruption. At the last moment, there was a pungent smell of gunpowder, tearing it to death. The cold suddenly turned to eating, and the people present didn't react either. They inexplicably looked at Zhao Wendo and the rabbit in their hands. In these days and years, no one has any surplus food, and a half-hungry belly cannot get a single bit of meat residue for many days. At first glance, when you see a carnivorous animal, its nose will automatically smell of meat, and its salivary glands will unnaturally secrete saliva. Zhao Wendo didn't even need to look closely to know that everyone's attention had been drawn to her, and the soft drooling sounds in the crowd were the best proof. Li Tsuasian's answer was originally just a clue. To cook dinner, you need to have well-prepared ingredients. Zhao Wendo used this excuse to pull out the sickle from behind, holding the ears of two rabbits in his left hand, and cutting it off with a single blow in his right hand. The rabbit immediately had a different head. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Scare Away You are listening at NovelFull.audio the source has no content or has errors. Chapter 3 Reasons You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Reasons Most of these villagers in Belongli are native villagers. Which family doesn't keep a chicken, duck, goose, or dog? It's not uncommon to slaughter poultry or livestock during festivals to entertain guests or satisfy one's own cravings. Even a three- or five-year-old child has witnessed it, let alone an adult. The housewife at home is not a big deal when she sees some flesh and blood. Even the timid ones are at most scared, so they don't feel scared out of their wits. In front of so many people, they don't even want their faces and leave in a panic. If we were to say that the bright red blood pool on the snow at that time was indeed making people feel uneasy, but at that time both sides were fighting hard, even if they felt afraid, they had to hold on hard, and their faces couldn't show any fear. They were so scared by a dead rabbit that they almost wet their pants. Isn't that easy to say, right? How did I know? Zhao Wenduo looked up at Li Tsuasian and then glanced at Zhao Mingyu, pausing for a moment. I have to ask you, didn't you argue about that woman's good fortune a few days ago? She had a broken mouth and said that the man she was looking for was kind to her, not willing to say a word about her. She didn't even want to get involved in her family work, and after all these years of marriage, she didn't even dare to kill a chicken. She said that she would feel dizzy when she saw blood, and I made her look spoiled. Zhao Wendwa's words reminded Li Tsuasian. That day, when she returned from the polishing room and took freshly pricked pig feed, she met Ding Meifeng on the way and asked her to mock her. Inside and outside, she said that Zhao Mingyu was a useless man. She didn't know how much she cared for his wife, but she still did so much work even though she had a big belly. Unlike her family's Wang Chunmao, who cared for her and didn't even need her to kill chickens, she just waited to go home and eat ready-made food. This woman marries a Han, dresses and eats. Finding a man is a top priority for a woman in her lifetime. Whoever finds the right person is good, and who finds the wrong person is bad. It's unclear which one is in the dark, whether it's obvious or not. Li Tsuasian has always been strong, but Zhao Mingyu is her weakness. It's okay not to mention it usually. If someone points it out in front of her, can the fire be reduced? She had nowhere to vent her anger, so when she got home, 
she blamed Zhao Mingyu and cursed Ding Meifeng all the time, leaving her mouth idle for an hour. At noon, when everyone in the family came back to eat, they all had their ears pierced by Ding Dalaba. Ding was so delicate that it was difficult to remember. So that's why you thought of scaring her by killing rabbits. I just gave it a try, but I didn't expect she was really afraid of blood, Zhao Wendo said casually. She naturally wouldn't say some things, and the look she cast at Ding Meifeng at that time was mixed with poison. In her previous life, she was not only an architectural designer, but also worked as a security guard for a period of time. She was a heroic celebrity bodyguard and had seen some real badges in her hands, so her aura was naturally extraordinary. It is impossible to completely digest an ordinary person's killing intent in a very short time. Moreover, she was already guilty and timid, and it was normal for her to be scared to death at a glance. Of course, these outsiders have no way of knowing. Just like her background, it was just a construction site in D City in the 21st century, where engineer Zhao stumbled and fell downstairs to save a worker. A wandering soul, who had died but realized its existence, passed through countless void and starry dust, and arrived at a certain point in the history of China. This small mountain village named Belongli became the third daughter of the Zhao family. Oh my! Li Tsuizhen slapped and chuckled, that's what it's called. If bad things happen too much, God will help take her away. If it weren't for her foul mouth behavior, would killing a rabbit scare her like that? It's purely a guilty conscience. I see if she dares to talk nonsense again in the future. If she doesn't say what she can do, my second son's reputation will be tarnished, Zhao Mingyu said calmly as she sat on the con. After sighing, he said, I won't be able to go out and have a peaceful life anymore. I must have called Luo Laohan and them to talk about me. I really can't lift my head. If this kid were born, why did all these things come? Men of similar age in the village like to sit together and chat when they have nothing to do. Luo Laohan and Zhao Mingyu belong to this type of family, and they will still become close relatives. Their relationship will be closer and they will gather more often. Zhao Minglan had already stopped crying, but upon hearing this, she began to lower her head and wipe away her tears, sobbing softly in grievances. What's so smelly? There's nothing wrong with that. Let me take a look at who smells. I won't tear her mouth, Li Tsuizhen shouted outside, raising her neck to let people know. What exactly happened yesterday is unclear to others, can their own family still not be clear about it? The town where Belongli village is located is called Chioshue town. Several factories have been established in the streets of the town, and Zhao Wenlan is one of the workers in the embroidery factory. She only transitioned from an apprentice to a formal worker in the spring of this year, earning a monthly salary of 30 to 40 yuan. Sometimes, the benefits can even double. Perhaps these wages can only be considered at an average basic level in big cities, but in such small towns, they cannot be underestimated, especially in several villages below Chioshue town. The best male laborers can earn at most 1.2 yuan per day, and the total amount for a month is 36 yuan. This is because at most, ordinary laborers cannot earn these wages. It is precisely because of this that being able to work in the factory in the town is a very honorable thing. Not only is the work light and efficient, but it also earns a lot of money and has a good reputation. This account is something that everyone can handle. However, not everyone can take a bite of the delicious pastries they know. Every time several factories have recruitment quotas, the young people who sign up are all outstanding, and those who can be recruited are all outstanding. The embroidery factory where Zhao Wenlan works has the strictest requirements, not only for young girls, but also for good looks, clever hands, and stable temperament. Embroidering is a slow job, and it's not good for those who are restless and restless. The people in the town know that the female workers in this embroidery factory are all one in a hundred girls. Not only are they handsome and have a good personality, but the key is that they can also make money. Whoever wants to marry them back home is like smoke from their ancestral graves, burning high incense. 
So, the female workers in this embroidery factory have always been the goddesses in the hearts of young men of all ages, and the best candidates for daughters-in-law in the eyes of mother-in-law. And Zhao Wenlan is the most outstanding looking among these girls, who have long been targeted by those with intentions. Since the beginning of the year, matchmakers from Lao Zhao's family have been coming to propose marriage, but Li Tsuasian has refused. It's not that the other party's family background is bad, but she thinks that the second girl is only a little old, and the general is only 16 years old, so why not wait until 20 years old? In this way, I can still stay at my mother's house for four years, earning enough good money to support my family. When I leave, I can't even send money to my mother's house. I can't even care about my own small family, and I can't even hope for it. I can't blame Li Tsuasian for being too practical. The Zhao family didn't have a strong and sturdy labor force, and the only man, Zhao Mingyu, coughed for years. He had to stay at home for 200 days a year to take care of his illness, and the remaining 100 or so days couldn't earn much even if he went to work, which was not as much as a half-year-old child. Except for Zhao Weining, who can earn a full salary, Zhao Wenlan's monthly salary of a few dozen yuan is quite hard for other illnesses, minor illnesses, and pregnant women. It's really not without her. Some people understand the situation of the Zhao family, while others do not. Some people who were rejected from marriage may not have said much on their faces, but there is also a lot of resentment behind their backs. They speak with sourness and jealousy, saying that the Zhao family has a golden daughter and plans to marry the heavenly King Laozi as their empress in the future. Such a small family naturally looks down upon them. This grievance has gone viral, and those who have proposed but not have a clear idea in their hearts. The second daughter of the Zhao family is not easy to marry. If the family's personal conditions are not good, let's dispel this idea as soon as possible. But unfortunately, there are people who are unwilling and cannot bring it up openly, so they come in secret and specialize in pondering the sinister ways. There is a second scumbag named Wu Saner at the end of Jinan Street. He spends his days thinking about some crooked ways and deeds, but he has done a lot of unethical things both before and after. He is already a habitual offender in the three visits to the palace. Wu Saner has heard of beautiful girls coming out of the embroidery factory for a long time. She often sneaks over to work, grabbing every nook and cranny, staring at the passing female worker without saying a word. However, when she meets that sleazy person, she also hiccups. Zhao Wenlan's beauty is also the most outstanding among a group of girls. Wu Saner has been interested in this for a long time, but he also knows that his conditions can never win the favor of other girls, and thinking about it will break his heart. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Bad Hearts You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Bad Hearts The Embroidery Factory has good efficiency and occasionally works overtime. Zhao Wenlan is an excellent backbone worker in the factory, and she almost always works overtime, and this time there is no exception. About ten female workers rushed and took over an hour to get rid of this batch of work, and by the time they finished work, it was already dark. There are several brigades under the jurisdiction of Chiushui Town, and all of these female workers in the factory are in each brigade, while there is only Zhao Wenlan in Belongli village. The working hours in several factories in the town are similar, and Zhao Wenlan usually accompanies girls from the same village who work in other factories. However, this time, due to overtime, she is the only one left. The town is not far from the village, and Zhao Wenlan is also used to this road. It's not uncommon for her to commute alone, and she doesn't take it too seriously. But as we walk, the sky gets darker, and it's inevitable that we'll have some small drumbeats in our hearts. Otherwise, it's because of what she's afraid of. As she was about to turn another corner and get home, suddenly a black shadow rushed out from the roadside. Unprepared, Zhao Wenlan was suddenly knocked down to the ground, her head instantly blinded. After a few short seconds of spinning, when she became conscious, she only felt a chill around her neck. The buttons in front of me were torn open twice, and the snow under my head was pouring into my neck through the open collar. 
Zhao Wenlan instantly realized what was making a scream, and instinctively threw the contents of her hand at the black hand that was climbing up. Half of the remaining lunchbox was thrown directly at the man's cheek, and the spoon box clanged. Perhaps the potential was unleashed during the crisis, and coupled with the fact that the thief was already feeling guilty, Zhao Wenlan repeatedly swung and punched the man, forcing him to retreat. She quickly got up from the ground and ran stumbling all the way until she saw Zhao Wendo coming to pick her up at the village entrance. Her tense heart relaxed and she immediately fainted. After waking up, Zhao Wenlan told her family what had happened. Although the sky was a bit dark at the time, the person's face could be seen clearly from such a close distance. Wu Saner was a well-known second scumbag in Chioshui town, and almost no one didn't know him, so there was no way she would admit her mistake. A 16 or 17 year old girl, walking on the street and being disrespected by others, is easy to say but not easy to hear. If you know well, you might think that the second girl from the Zhao family is not behaving properly. Fortunately, there was no danger, and it was fortunate that such a thing did not happen. If we were to say that anger is indeed anger, would it be better to cut off that damn Wu Saner a few times to vent our anger? But it is the woman who suffers from this kind of thing, and if we really say it, it is not anyone else who will damage her reputation. Then Wu Saner is already a product that cannot be steamed or cooked well, and even if it stinks, where can it still stink? But the woman is different. It's uncertain how many people will gossip. How can the girl's family tolerate that? Should we get married in the future? After careful consideration, this matter can only be described as suffering from the mute-eating yellow lotus, and one can't hold themselves to justice if they think they are unlucky. The Zhao family quietly swallowed up the matter, and unexpectedly had Ding Meifeng shout loudly today, which led to this argument. Li Tsuizhen turned her head and said diagonally, Hey Zhao Mingyu, if you don't speak up, I won't scold you anymore. So many people were gathered in the yard waiting to see a joke before, but you're so bad that you squatted at the door and didn't dare to let go. If it weren't for Lao San's idea of scaring Ding Meifeng away and turning the situation around, probably all the people in the village would be talking nonsense by now. Tell me about you, an old man is not like an old man and can't bear any of the burden. Your physique is bad, and your mouth is also bad. You can't say anything to refute and refute, just look at him. Someone else splashed a basin of dirty water over. At this point, I'm still thinking about whether my reputation is bad or not. Is there someone like you who is like a father? After this scolding, none of the people in the room spoke up, only Zhao Wenlan could be heard sobbing softly. Li Tsuizhen's insults undeniably revealed certain facts, and Zhao Mingyu's cowardice became another thorn in everyone's heart at this critical moment. It is said that the father is like a mountain, sturdy and heavy, with broad arms guarding every child, providing them with a refuge in times of vulnerability and a safe haven to anchor when tired. But for the daughters of the Zhao family, they couldn't feel it at all, the word, dad, doesn't give them much peace of mind. From childhood to adulthood, what I have experienced the most is taking care of them. It's just that it's not him taking care of them, but the other way around, everyone is taking care of this dad. Just like at this moment, when his daughter was wronged and his wife was angry, his concern was not how to comfort him, but how to embarrass him when his reputation was damaged. As long as you're not aware, no one will say anything, Zhao Wendo glanced at Zhao Mingyu and coldly threw out a sentence. I don't look up to this kind of person the most. It would still be the security team that used to say a lot of crooked things and then back down. The soft guy had already been kicked over, and no one would tolerate this kind of guy dragging his feet in the team. There is nothing left to eat and nothing to do. Zhao Wendo really doesn't have a good impression of this cheap dad who is sickly, delicious, lazy, always negative when he has nothing to do, and with the whole family in a bad mood. It's not as good as a hardliner mom. It doesn't matter if she spoils or not, at least she knows how to protect her own nest in front of outsiders. Yes, the third person is right. If you don't shout, who can talk nonsense? Li Tsuizhen scolded Zhao Wen several times on this, 
but this time she was so panicked that she didn't teach her a lesson. It was mainly because Zhao Mingyu's two words made her even more angry. Being a father is not like a father, you can't help anything, and there is a lot of idle talk. If you don't feel embarrassed to go out, then stay at home and don't go anywhere. The whole family will take care of an old master. Li Tsuasian was just a king at home, and her words were just Wang Fa. Zhao Mingyu was scolded for not daring to say a word and kept muttering to herself, I just said that. How could I have caused such a big trouble? I knew I wouldn't have said anything. All right, second lady, don't cry either. Wash your face and wait for a while to eat. Li Tsuasian naturally couldn't continue cursing, and looked at the second girl who was still in tears and said. Zhao Mingyu's weakness can be considered as Li Tsuasian's disguised waist growth for her, coupled with the dirty water splashed on her body that was washed away by Zhao Wen was one. Zhao Wenlan finally saw the light in her heart, and her tears finally stopped falling. She lifted her blushing face and whispered to the three girls sitting next to her, Third, thank you so much today, second sister. Thank you. She couldn't even imagine it. If it weren't for the third person's words at that time, everyone in the yard would have believed Ding Meifeng's words. It would have been like her father said. She wouldn't have been able to leave this door, and even those idle words could have crushed her to death. That's really not worth living. Thank you for what I did. Zhao Wenduo said with a still displeased expression, it's not a big deal, it's just killing a rabbit, and it doesn't take much effort. After a pause, he added, as long as you don't blame me for talking nonsense, that's all. Zhao Wenlan was stunned for a moment, without realizing what the following sentence meant. It was Li Tsuasian who had a reaction first. Hey, third, aren't you saying that for your second sister? Otherwise, how would they know that Big Horn is making a fool of herself? Your second sister only got wet when she came here. If it weren't for the embarrassment in front of so many old men, she wouldn't have been in a passive situation. Fortunately, the third little girl, outsiders think she doesn't understand anything and doesn't notice anything when she says it. At this moment, Zhao Wenlan realized that her privacy had been exposed. She was a girl with thin skin, so she immediately blushed and exclaimed, oh, almost getting into a crack in the ground. Shame returns to shame, but in the end, this reputation has been washed away. Compared to this loss, the clown is nothing. The gratitude for Zhao Wendo's actions still accounts for most of it. A slight complaint in private is also due to the shyness of the youngest daughter's family. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Rabbit Rice You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Rabbit Rice A few people spoke for a moment, and Zhao Wenying cooked a pot of radish and rabbit meat in the outer room. The lid of the pot was lifted, and the meat aroma was overflowing. Two large bowls of soup and meat were filled, and a cloth was placed on the table. The commotion lasted for such a long time, causing both anger and worry. The whole family was also affected and hungry, and their stomachs were empty and flustered. As soon as the meat came in, their eyes were fixed on it, unable to hold anything else. The whole family had a round belly for this meal, and even a burp had a rabbit flavor. They put away their chopsticks and couldn't even walk around the table. Having a full stomach and a beautiful mood. The farce in the evening seemed to have become less disturbing. The Jiang family, who live in the house, usually come over to take a look at their meals, intentionally or unintentionally showing off their food, indicating that the Zhao family is not as good as the Jiang family. This kind of competition between the female hosts has always been enjoyable, almost every three days or two. However, at this moment, the sound has subsided, and the door facing them is tightly closed. If it weren't for the light shining through the crack in the door, they would have thought there was no one inside. Why hasn't there been any movement in that house today? Grandma Jiang won't come out and say that their family has eaten three dishes. Li Wenlan drank a large bowl of rabbit meat soup, and the hot pain in her stomach dissipated. Now she was lazily lying on the Kong, not to mention feeling very comfortable. 
The main house where the Zhao family lives is divided into two families, with the upper house being the Zhao family and the lower house being the Jiang family. The two families have some relatives, and the Jiang family has a higher generation. Although they are of similar age, several girls from the Zhao family have to call the Jiang family several children aunts and uncles. Li Tsuizhen also had to call the Jiang family woman auntie, and in fact, she was only two years younger each year. That is to say, the younger generation usually looks at the faces of their elders and has long had objections. She actually wanted to show off, but she was able to show off. No dish is as good as meat. Li Tsuizhen sat on the Kong, rubbing hemp rope and shaking her hammer in mid-air for several turns. The fine hemp grass was tangled together and twisted into strands, and the fur edges were smooth with water. Zhao Weining was helping with the work beside her. She looked up at the door and couldn't help but chuckle softly as she thought about cooking. Previously, the rabbit meat had just been cooked and hadn't come out of the pot yet. It was probably because the fragrance had drifted in, and my uncle sneaked out. I brought him a piece, and Jiang Lao Lao used the excuse to come out and ask my uncle to come back to the house for dinner. I saw her glance into the pot, and the mouthful of water was almost flowing out of her mouth, which was also insatiable. Thinking of someone who is usually tall and aloof, Li Tsuizhen would also show a sense of reluctance. She felt a sense of relief after being suppressed for a long time, and her voice was filled with joy. My third girl did such a beautiful job today, and this rabbit played well. A rabbit not only washed the second girl's innocence, filled her stomach, but also gained a face, which can be said to be killing three birds with one stone. Zhao Wendo was praised one after another, feeling that the heat was almost over. He muttered twice and said, so what? The water in the pot has been filled again, and that half box of rice has been put on and steamed. Still eating, you're not full, are you? Zhao Weining said with a hint of surprise. Two pieces of corn cakes and a large bowl of soup and meat, put in an amount that is usually not eaten in a day, how much time has it taken for me to eat? How can I still eat it? Big sister, don't talk about the third sister. The rice is so delicious that you can eat it even when you're full. Zhao Wen Nan, the fourth son of the Zhao family, is a five-year-old girl who is thin and small. Her sparse yellow hair is tied loosely in a bun behind her head, and she walks up and down with a trembling sensation. I came over and tugged at Zhao Weining, then turned around and shouted to Li Tsuizhen, Mom, I also want to eat the leftover rice from second sister. Let's eat, let's eat, let's all go eat. Li Tsuizhen snorted, a dog can't hold too young of sesame oil in its stomach. It's necessary to eat all the delicious food in one meal and not stay overnight. Although there was no good response, I agreed. This is also a way to regain face and feel good. With just a few words, putting aside such good things as usual won't make it into the mouths of a few girls. It can be said that the second son Zhao Wenlan is a special case. Li Tsuizhen is a tough and cold person, perhaps because she lost her father since childhood and her mother left for a family that she couldn't even hope for. She has to rely on herself for everything, which has developed a stubborn and tough personality. In addition, the man she married, Zhao Mingyu, is also someone she can't bring up, which amplifies her personality. Even when it comes to treating her own children, there are rarely moments of warmth. Among the four girls, the second one is a typical Lin Daiyu, with a figure like Lu Fufeng and a timid and worried personality. She can easily cry over a small matter, and her tears are not worth it. She can pick up a teapot anytime and anywhere. It is said that birds that can call have insects to eat, and the second girl's physical stupidity was largely separated from Li Tsuizhen's few maternal love. Among the few children, not only the one Li Tsuizhen is currently pregnant with, but the second one, Zhao Wenlan, is the most beloved by Li Tsuizhen. It is said that the five fingers of this hand are not of the same length. Although Li Tsuizhen doesn't spoil the children much, they are relatively rare for these two girls. In her own words, being a mother with many children always misses the sickest, poorest, 
and most unhappy one the most. At present, none of the four girls have married and left their families. They are living a poor life, and if they are not satisfied, they cannot be seen. In their mother's family, these two conditions are still the same, except for illness, which can be reflected. Zhao Wenlan has been weak and sickly since childhood, and with such a temperament, Li Tsuasian is bound to worry more about her. Taking yesterday as an example, Zhao Wenying and Zhao Wenlan worked at similar times and also worked overtime late. Li Tsuasian came out with a big belly to welcome Zhao Wenlan, but did not think of picking him up. Thanks to Zhao Wenying's good temperament, she was accustomed to letting her sisters do everything and showing filial piety and understanding to her parents as much as possible. Even if there was a little loss, she quickly calmed it down before she even had a chance to show it. She not only didn't feel unhappy, but also made excuses for Li Tsuasian with understanding. Second, she is weak in physique and timid, not as strong and courageous as her. It's only right for her mother to worry more about her when it gets dark. If one has a different mindset and loves to argue, it's hard to guarantee that they won't make a few loud noises. How could I have worked hard all day, tired and hungry, and still stood together waiting? If it weren't for Zhao Wendo waiting at the village entrance first, and her strong strength, she would have picked up Zhao Wenlan and walked home when she fainted. Zhao Wenying had designated her to carry it. Just like that, he was holding the shovel with one hand and looking at Li Tsuasian. Zhao Wenlan celebrated her 16th birthday today. In the morning, Li Tsuasian specially steamed a box of rice and boiled an egg for her. These two are good things, except for the Chinese New Year and holidays, which can be shared by one person. They are not even visible at the dinner table. Zhao Wenlan was frightened yesterday, and due to her discomfort and lack of appetite, she brought back most of the leftover lunchbox. Due to the previous incident, I ordered to give Zhao one more food. If this is changed from the past, not to mention the cold rice left from half a lunchbox, it is the highest quality Jin Lu rice. It is not eaten just by opening your mouth, and it will also become greasy every now and then. Coarse grain noodles are used to adjust the taste. But not to mention the bravery of the past, this hero is both present and present. End of this chapter. Chapter 6. Bragging. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Bragging It's been a year since I came here, and I've almost stopped eating rice porridge. Except for adding a piece of dry food at noon, it's always thin soup in the morning and evening. There's no second dish, only salty radish strips cut into chopsticks. Each person also needs to be given a fixed amount, one bowl for adults and half a bowl for children. However, once the rice cooked by the number of people is served, there is only one bowl left, and the extra bite must be given to Zhao Mingyu. Eating like this all year round, no one can resist it, and even those who are not greedy will see the fine grains with green eyes. Although it may be a bit shameful, it is an undeniable fact. Zhao Wendo doesn't know what her original body is like, she only knows that she hasn't had enough to eat at all, especially in this age group with a long body. She is also a strong-willed person and consumes exceptionally quickly. Especially after doing physical work, that stomach became like a bottomless pit. This also gave her reason to suspect that her original body did not just die from a high fever, it is highly likely that she also went hungry. The lid of the pot, strung together with high beams and poles, emitted a white mist like steam. After burning for over half an hour, a pot of hot water finally boiled, and after a while, the kitchen in the outer room was covered and no one was seen. Zhao Wendo stood up from the small stool and turned sideways to chill, lifting the lid of the pot, so that the hot air couldn't reach him. The boiling water in the pot was splashing with water, and an aluminum lunch box was placed on the fork of the pot. The leftover rice, which had been cold for a day, still had a fragrant aroma when steamed out, and the hot air rushed up. With both hands holding the edge of the lunchbox, he quickly threw the rice onto the cooking table, making a loud clang that could be heard clearly inside the room. Li Tsuasian raised her voice and said, When the food is ready, you two can stay in the outer room and eat. 
Your greedy teeth have all fallen out one by one. You dare not hurry up. Zhao Wenan grinned happily and ran out with a jolt. Zhao Wendo took an aluminum spoon and grabbed Zhao Wenan. The two of them squatted on the edge of the pot, and we ate half of the rice box, one by one. Third sister, this big rice is really delicious. Zhao Wenan smacked his little mouth, savoring the remaining fragrance on his tongue. If only there could be more. Zhao Wendo also felt the same way and touched his stomach, which had been warmed by the rice. He nodded and said, hmm, it's delicious. Wait, I'll get you a few burlap bags one day so you can eat enough. Cows make you boast to the sky, even a few burlap bags, and even a few pounds of rice you can get back is considered impressive. Li Tsuasian scolded in a sharp voice inside the room, little girl, you never speak a word a day. You dare to say anything, but you need to change this habit. If you're so unobstructed, be careful that I'll sew your mouth together. Zhao Wenan shrunk his neck and made a gesture of silence. He whispered to Zhao Wendo, third sister, stop talking. Mom just heard dad talk about her son again. She's feeling frustrated and flustered. Don't hit the gun. Previously, she was still shouting, more, more, my mother's daughter, but after a while, the, girl movie, was called out again. It was really faster than flipping through a book. It seems that the old scar has curled up again, and it is still quite noticeable. Zhao Wenlan sneered expressionlessly in secret. This can't be blamed on her. She eats things she sees every day, weighing around a hundred pounds in a bag. It's not just about buying, but being used to it is just a subconscious response. She didn't think too much about it. Who knew she could get scolded? Why didn't you say anything? Did you make a mistake? The voice inside the room was noticeably raised twice, listening extremely clearly. Zhao Wenan's little hand reminded him to poke her, and Zhao Wendo said, Um, I got it. In this family, Li Tsuasian is the absolute hegemon, and any resistance of any nature that shows a little bit will be severely suppressed. The head of the household, so far only one male. Zhao Mingyu has to submit to this authority, let alone others. Zhao Wendo wisely closed his mouth and silently picked up a water ladle to take the basin and fill the pot with hot water. Zhao Wenlan has a weak physique, and is most afraid of the cold in winter. In addition, she has encountered inconvenient days, and in the evening, there is such a commotion. She is ashamed, angry, and depressed, and all the unpleasant things come together. Yesterday, I fell in the snow again, accumulating a day's worth of cold. The pain and discomfort surged in my mind. People who have never experienced this kind of pain in a girl's family naturally cannot imagine what kind of discomfort it would be. Zhao Wenlan is one of the more serious ones, besides stomach pain, she also vomited and let out. After drinking that bowl of meat soup at night, she poured it all out. In a moment, the person was tossed and turned to the brink of death, lying on the Kong without even the strength to scream. Almost every month, the Zhao family takes it for granted to come and go like this. The conditions at home are just like this, unable to find better facilities. I washed my hands and feet with half a large pot of boiling water, then filled a self-sewn water bag with hot water, and hugged my stomach, which always relieved me a lot. Boss, the second one has been cold this time. Go make a bowl of brown sugar water for her to drink. Zhao Wenying said, isn't that two pounds of brown sugar kept for mom to use when you give birth to the fifth child for postpartum confinement? Why don't you ask the second child to take two painkillers? The two pounds of brown sugar at home were saved up by the whole family for several months, and no one could bear to move them. They were just kept for Li Tsuasian to produce intact and replenish her body. If I asked you to take it, you can take it. Where did it take so much trouble? If it weren't for tearing up this scene today, Li Tsuasian wouldn't have thought of taking it out. But when she saw Zhao Wenlan crying with her red circles under her eyes, curling up and moaning softly, she felt both reluctant and ashamed. My own girl has been sexually assaulted by someone. As a parent, 
I can't support her and have to cover up the situation tightly. Even if someone yells, I can't expose it. No matter what the reason is, she always feels a bit guilty. Not only did Li Tsuasian think this way, but Zhao Weining, as the elder sister, also felt very uncomfortable in her heart. However, she could do nothing but feel uncomfortable for the girl. She turned around and silently walked to the five-bucket cabinet, took out the two pounds of brown sugar from inside, scooped up two spoons with an empty bowl and poured boiling water onto the con. Zhao Wenlan washed hot water and drank brown sugar. The pain finally subsided these days, and her face looked a bit better. Her mental state also improved a lot. Isn't it all cleaned up? If there's nothing else, hurry up and go to the Kong to sleep, save some electricity. With a large population, where can we afford money? You can help me make a living. Li Tsuasian's words are the imperial edict. Anyone who dares not to listen is still on the bed with three sisters on the ground taking off their shoes. The Zhao family has a relatively good composition. The eighth generation of poor farmers and the grandfather's generation are all tenants for landlords, without land, houses, and money. Zhao Mingyu is the second child in the family. His stepmother despised the child in the front nest and kicked him out of singlehood early on. At the age of 18, she married Li Tsuasian, who was the same age. The two settled down in Belongli village and were given a house to live in. The house is actually an upper room, and the kitchen and walkway on the outer floor are shared with the Jiang family in the lower room. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Who Goes? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Who Goes A house of about 20 square meters has a five-bucket cabinet on the ground to the east, two old wooden boxes for clothes to the north, an iron frame in the west corner, a wash basin on top, and two wooden stools next to it. The heated Kong is built facing south, which provides better lighting. Most households in the village have their Kong facing south. There are six people in the Zhao family, big and small. Not to mention the one inside, they sleep on the bed from west to east. The hottest Kong head is Zhao Mingyu, with Li Tsuasian next to her. Zhao Wennan is next to her, followed by Zhao Wenlan and Zhao Wendo, while Zhao Weining sleeps at the top of the Kong. The local heated Kong relies on the temperature of the lower Kong passage, and the closest to the fire source is the Kong head, which is also the most susceptible to heating. However, if the distance between the Kong tips is far, the heating rate is relatively slow. Usually, one side is already hot, and the other side is only warming up. Who wouldn't want to sleep on the hot Kong head in the middle of winter, but there is only one location, so it's naturally impossible for everyone to sleep at home with a large population. According to local customs, it has always been the elders sleeping on their heads and the juniors sleeping on their tails. The Zhao family is no exception. Zhao Mingyu has always been sleeping on the Kong. He is the head of the family and has been suffering from illness for many years, so everyone needs to take care of him. Li Tsuasian is a mother, so she naturally ranks second. Their positions can be said to be steadfast. The electric light was first turned off, and the moon outside was obscured by clouds, making it impossible to penetrate the light. Inside, the house was pitch black and I couldn't even see my fingers when I reached out. Li Tsuasian rolled over and coughed twice, this Kong is quite hot today. Third, you've burned too much at night. You really don't know how to live at all, just know how to save trouble, but you have to work hard to stuff it into the Kong. Can't you see how high the firewood stack is still? You can't even persist in burning it like this for ten and a half days. How do you plan to spend this winter? Starting from tomorrow, reduce the quantity by half. If you can finish the meal, turn off the fire. If you can save one, it will be worth one, is the Kong hot. I didn't realize it, did you feel bad? Zhao Wendo touched the thin mat under his body and lay down for a while, feeling a little warm. He still relied on his body temperature to keep it warm. The temperature on the Kong mat was not as high as the body temperature. Let you talk back again. 
With a whoosh in the darkness, something skimmed over Ah, it hit Zhao Wendo's head accurately. Li Tsuizhen raised her voice and shouted, I just finished teaching you a lesson and you fell ill again. If you don't have a big mouth, I'll slap you in the face next time. I see you're still in a bad mood. What I'm saying is the truth. Why do we have to say it's hot when the Kong is not hot? Boss, there's not even a bit of heat on your end, it's just hitting people when it's not cold. Why don't you tell her? Zhao Wendo covered his forehead and touched the bumps on the broom he just flew over to sweep the Kong with, feeling quite dissatisfied. What is she? I don't know if you want to call her mom. I see you remember to eat or not. Zhao Wenying turned her elbow and said, you're used to listening to mom when she talks. Where's all that nonsense coming from? What can you do if it's cold or not? Cover it for a while before it gets hot. So it's still cool, isn't it? Zhao Wendo intuitively answered. Li Tsuizhen stood up and threw the ragged shirt under her pillow, crumpled into a ball. I don't think you're done yet, she gasped and lay back. All right, third brother, don't make mom angry. Zhao Wenlan poked Zhao Wenduo with her finger under the blanket and said, if you want to burn less, burn less. There isn't much firewood at home, and mom is also in a hurry. She said a big truth together, but the three of them fought against her together. Zhao Wendo's mouth was deflated and he no longer spoke. He beat the little person harder and harder in his mind, and the little person's zombie face was cut to pieces. Seeing her speechless, Zhao Wenying tried to smooth things out and said, Mom, the third person knows he's wrong this time, but he's afraid to do it in the future. Mom, don't be angry, go to bed quickly. Someone handed over the ladder and naturally stepped on it. Li Tsuizhen breathed a sigh of relief and said, Don't you think I don't want to burn too much fire? Who wouldn't know how hot the Kong is on this cold day? But our conditions are here, and there's only a small stack of firewood left. It won't be until the Chinese New Year. It's always a matter of time. If we don't go up the mountain and chop back some in the next few days, we won't have to say I'm stingy and won't let you burn anymore. Setting aside who is right and who is wrong, it is an undeniable fact that there is indeed a shortage of firewood now. Zhao Wenying said, why don't I take another day off tomorrow and cut dozens of bundles to make up for the situation before the new year. We'll talk about it after the new year. If we can't, we'll take another day off and go chop. You only took half a day off today, how can you still take another day off tomorrow? The cleaning of the river is the top grain money arranged by the team, and if you are absent for a full day, you will be deducted five pounds of grain, which is not suitable. Li Tsuizhen strongly disagrees. Full attendance determines the amount of grain to be distributed, which is already not enough to eat. Isn't it even less to delay it? Why don't I go then? Zhao Wenlan whispered softly, clearly lacking confidence, and even she felt it was unlikely to succeed. Li Tsuizhen said, forget it, don't cut off the firewood and cut off your own hands. Besides, if you work overtime this month, you can earn more than two yuan a day. If you don't take advantage of this time to earn more, you can't go either. Cough, cough. Zhao Mingyu coughed twice, gasping in her throat. It's been cold these past few days, and I've been panting hard. I'm afraid I can't even climb the mountain. Otherwise, I'll go. As soon as he spoke, the room suddenly became quiet, and no one spoke. Zhao Wendo didn't know what the other members of the Zhao family were thinking, but she felt that Zhao Mingyu was a bit. To put it another way, he was really resting. If he didn't feel comfortable, he would exaggerate himself as the boss, making people feel that he might not be able to do it in the next moment. In fact, it's just that the trachea is not very good, and if you catch a cold wind, you will have wheezing in your throat. It's not a serious illness, so you wouldn't care if you switched to a slightly stronger one. But he's better off. He spoils himself, coughs twice and has to take medicine to rest. He can't work anymore, and he can't do any work. He just lies at home to raise himself. 
It is precisely because of his weakness that Li Tsuasian has to be strong, otherwise this family would have to be arrogant. If you cough, stop talking. Everyone knows you're not in good health, what else can you do? Since getting married, Zhao Mingyu has been like this. Li Tsuasian has long been accustomed to his constant illness and doesn't expect him to help share much. Isn't that right? With poor health, I can't work, but I can still have children as usual. Lying at home without doing anything all day, with a leisurely spirit, and finding a tired wife to have children at night. Zhao Wenduo complained in the quilt for a while. After being lectured twice, he also had a long memory. If he had something to say, he would come back without opening his mouth. Saying that half a day is equivalent to nothing, isn't there still no suitable person to chop firewood? Bala calculated with his hands that there were only a few people in his family. Apart from those who earned food to support their illness, the remaining three were a five-dot-year-dot-old child and a pregnant woman who was nine months pregnant. Which one could go up the mountain in this cold and freezing weather? End of this chapter Chapter 8 I Go You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 I Go Zhao Wendo stared at the ceiling, accustomed to the darkness and able to see some light. There was a willow frame tied to the beam and pillar above his head, and more than half a pound of biscuits were inside, which was a great way to add to Li Tsuasian's mouth when she was hungry. Among the family members, only Zhao Wen Nan, the youngest of the four sisters, rubbed against Li Tsuasian and got more than half of the money. Others didn't even taste the dregs. As for Zhao Mingyu, he often stays at home alone during the day, and no one knows whether he has eaten or not. Cake makers have a long shelf life, and in their past lives, they were one of the common foods. When they worked overtime and didn't have time to eat, they would still eat two pieces of food. However, most of them were packaged in sealed bags on supermarket shelves, and higher dot level ones would be placed in exquisite iron boxes. It is rare to see loose weighing items like those in baskets. A rectangular biscuit the size of a palm, with a few broken crystals of sugar on top, and a bite must be sweet and crispy. Blinking his tired eyes, Zhao Wendo said slowly, I'll go tomorrow. Boss, you can steam two pancakes for me and save some time. I won't come back at noon. How can we do that? How old are you? Zhao Wenying instinctively said, but then remembered that the three girls also followed up the mountain for a while today. She had originally taken half a day off to chop firewood on her own, but in just half an hour, Old San arrived, saying that the teacher had already finished school early in the afternoon. An eleven-year-old girl, standing straight, can only reach three buckets tall. She is so skinny and has the strength to do household chores, but when she goes up the mountain in the winter, she doesn't hesitate to do so. She cut seven bundles of firewood and made two trips to salvage the mountain, which is only ten minutes slower than her. Third, you still have to go to school, Zhao Wenlan tugged at her finger under the blanket. Stop talking, there will be a way. There are only a few monkeys at home, so if we don't go, we can't go. There is a way, what can we do? Zhao Wendo tugged at the corner of his mouth and said, Let Luo Saiping take a leave for me tomorrow. Just say I'm too sick to get up on the Kong, and the teacher can't come to see me at home. Luo Saiping is a young companion in the village, studying in the same school and class. Usually, anyone who has something to do will ask for leave on behalf of the teacher. The current situation of the Zhao family is such that no one can have overly optimistic ideas. After a moment of silence, Li Tsuasian said, If the third person wants to go, then go ahead. At eleven years old, I should be able to do some work. When I was your age, I used to carry a rice cooker every day, and there were plenty of people going up and down the mountains and rivers. Go ahead, go exercise. You won't need to chop twice at a time to become proficient. Mom, is that okay? Zhao Wenlan frowned and said in a hoarse voice, It's really cold, but there's no one to see on the mountain. Today we're with the boss, and if we encounter something else alone, the third person won't even be able to shout. 
just thinking about that situation made her feel anxious. It's a small matter whether she can cut firewood or not, and she can't bear it. Li Tsuasian spat and said, don't be fooled. What can happen in broad daylight? Perhaps she also felt uncertain and paused before saying, Yesterday I heard your Aunt Gua say in the yard that their family also needs to go up the mountain to get some firewood these days. Let's see if we go tomorrow and set up a company together. The Zhao family lives in a large courtyard, with a total of four families. The main house faces north and south, with the upper house being the Zhao family and the lower house being the Jiang family. In the east wing is the Chui family, and in the west wing is the Guo family. The four families live in the same courtyard, walking through an open door facing south, and outside is the front dirt road in the village. Li Tsuasian spoke up, who dares to have any further objections. Zhao Wendo's decision to go up the mountain to chop firewood and grass is considered settled. I had no dreams all night, and the next morning. At 4.30 p.m., the team's workers began to clock the clock. The big banging gong struck from the village head to the village end, and people from all households who worked tirelessly came out of their homes to gather, waiting for the team leader to arrange the tasks for the whole day. At this time, the sky hasn't lit up yet, and it's normal to carry a light and use a flashlight to work. Getting up early has become a habit among the villagers. The Zhao family woke up before four o'clock, and in the second half of the night, there was no heat left on the Kong. Lying under the bed, it became colder and colder as they slept. They got up early and started a fire, so they could take advantage of the warmth to take a nap. Zhao Weining started working the earliest, and she usually cooks this morning meal. Boil half a pot of rice porridge, then stew a Chinese cabbage, and roll a circle of rice cakes around the pot. There is food, vegetables, and dry food. Taking advantage of the heat and energy, you can eat two large bowls, and your body, which has been frozen for half a night, can also relax. In three meals a day, this morning we can see some dry food to fill our stomachs. The broken noodles made from polished corn kernels, even the rough navel of the belt, scrape my throat. However, in such a time of scarcity of clothing and food, they are already considered good food. There were only about ten pancakes in a pot, and after finishing this morning's meal, there wasn't much left. Zhao Wenlan had to bring her lunch at noon, and the only aluminum lunch box at home was for her to use. There were no extra ones left to serve. Li Tsuasian opened the five-bucket cabinet, picked up the worn-dot-out cloth corner from the bundle skin inside, wrapped two cakes, and handed them to Zhao Wendo. She followed the instructions twice and finished eating the cakes. Don't forget to bring back the cloth corner. Zhao Wenduo, the size of a palm, didn't really care about the broken cloth head. It used to be something that was left on the road when material resources were most scarce, but it was also a good thing here. In the past two months, she has also figured out some situations to some extent. Belongli is a rural area, unlike cities where food requires food vouchers, meat vouchers, and oil vouchers. During the autumn harvest here every year, the team distributes the annual grain to each household, mainly coarse grains, with corn as the main ingredient and miscellaneous grains as a supplement. For example, soybeans are about 2 kilograms per person, and families can generally divide them into more than 10 kilograms. If they receive 3 kilograms of soybeans from the oil mill in the town, they can earn 1 pound of oil per kilogram, and each family can also earn 4 to 5 kilograms of soybean oil per year. A family of 6 or 7, 7 or 8 people, each year they consume 4 or 5 pounds of soybean oil, with an average of only one spoonful of oil per meal, which may not be enough. When cooking a pot of food, the oil star can be easily ignored, almost identical to boiling it in water. Fortunately, some families can raise a pig, and by the end of the year, they can use some fat and oil residue to stir-fry vegetables, which can also make up for a little. It's just that this pig can't be raised much, and people can't eat enough yet. Where can we feed it with idle food? It's nothing more than crushed grains made from green grass, corn, and bones. 
It can grow up to 180 kilograms in a year, and even after removing bones, it can still leave 3 kilograms and 20 kilograms. Taking advantage of the cold weather, it freezes and eats until the spring of the following year. In addition to the basic three aspects of daily life, such as grain, oil, and meat, most of the others, like urban residents, need to be purchased with tickets, and distributing tickets is one of them. According to local standards, in the past two years, each person has received an average of about 3.5 to 4.2 square feet of cloth tickets per year. If you want to make new clothes, you need to gather the cloth tickets of the whole family together, and the corners of the rags become good things. If there is any wear and tear, you can mend it. It takes three years for the new and three years for the old, and sewing and patching for another three years, which is the value of this cloth. Roast belongs to roast, and the reality is just like that. Zhao Wenduo has no superfluous ideas. Even though he felt that the rag was falling into ashes and the hygiene was worrying, he silently put the packaged cake into his pocket. After eating, it's time to drink. It's inevitable to get thirsty after chopping wood all day, even if you don't bring that water when eating. Third, take this. Zhao Wenlan took out a military water bottle from her small bag and filled it with a spoonful of boiling water, saying, staying in the mountains for a day will definitely be cold. This water bottle can still cool down slowly. You can drink more while it's hot to keep warm. Zhao Wendo looked down at the kettle in his hand, with a new light green cover and a smooth dark green body. It looked like a new item, the kind he had never used before. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Chopping Firewood You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Chopping Firewood The Embroidery Factory received an order from the Municipal Weaving Factory before the New Year, specifically customizing a batch of New Year's Day pillowcases for a certain unit of the stationed army. The work is done clean and beautiful. The military support behavior of the leader of a factory was greatly praised by the superiors. With a wave of joy, he allocated ten of the returned gift water bottles to the embroidery factory as a reward for outstanding workers. Zhao Wenlan was extremely happy to receive a water bottle with the title of Skilled Embroiderer. This is a military green water bottle, even if she has money, she may not be able to buy it. If she carried it on her back and walked around the street, it would be even more exciting than getting double the overtime pay. Everyone in the family knows the origin of this kettle and the extent to which Zhao Wenlan treasures it. No one expected her to take it out at this moment. Zhao Wendo touched the warm cloth cover. Although it was just an aluminum water bottle, which could not be compared to a steel insulated cup, it was already a great thing here. It almost caught up with the existence of large household items, which could be used by her. This second person is really good. The morning time passed quickly, and one or two hours wobbled by. After finishing breakfast and tidying up, it was already 5.30. Li Tsuasian went to the West Wing Room, and the Guo family took a day off today to chop firewood and grass on the mountain. The Guo family consists of five strong laborers, all three of whom are in their twenties and are capable like calves. The Guo family and his wife are both simple and easy to get along with, and the two families are usually quite close. Li Tsuasian came over to support Zhao Wendo, who went up the mountain alone, and asked the two of them to help take care of him. Without saying a word, they nodded and told her to rest assured. Zhao Wenduo got up and went to greet Luo Saiping first, asking her to help take a day off from work with the teacher. The reason was that she had diarrhea and ran to the toilet six times in the middle of the night, but had not yet gotten up. Luo Saiping scratched her head and said, There are quite a few students in our class who have been running errands these past few days. I don't know if the teacher can believe them but what if they don't? What to do, cold salad? You are all idiots when you are a teacher. This reason is just a fabrication. It's not like eating a pot of rice, how can so many people pull their stomachs together? It's better to have something than nothing. She can't go home one by one to check, even if she knows it's a lie, that's all. Which family in this village is not all focused on food? 
Only when there is work can there be food, and they can't even eat enough. Why do they think about learning or not? There are many children and it's difficult to support. It's good to be able to survive, but it doesn't matter whether one goes to school or not. And this is not an isolated phenomenon, it is generally the case. It is common for those who can attend school for three years or two and drop out midway. A few days ago, Zhao Wendo heard Li Tsuasian and Zhao Mingyun nagging that if Lao Wu were born without anyone to help take care of her, she would have to work and earn food. There was no one in this mess at home. Old four is too young to handle anything, so it's best for old three to come down and ponder. This is a preventive shot given in advance, giving a warning in advance, which means that Zhao Wen Duo should stop studying and come down to take care of the children to do household work, so that adults can free up their hands to earn money to support this family. Although it was not explicitly stated, with Li Tzu Asian's position at home, this was almost a settled matter, and even if it was delayed, it wouldn't last long. Zhao Wendo is dispensable about this matter. After reading for nearly twenty years, his knowledge reserve can be considered sufficient. Even for elementary school students now, this simple thing is not a problem. The problem is that she has knowledge, but she hasn't seen a trace of her diploma. She can't go out and work under the guise of being semi-literate without graduating from elementary school. Compared to the difficulties we would encounter at that time, the problems we face now are just a piece of cake. Even for the sake of not dropping out of school, we must solve the difficulties in front of us, and we must cut this firewood no matter what. Of course, Zhao Wendo can also understand Li Tsuasian's difficulties. This family is old and young, weak and sickly, and it is really not easy to sustain it well. It's not that she's cruel to a few children, she just wants to spoil them more and doesn't have the conditions. She has to spoil them all, not work, not work, what to eat and drink. The pressure of life forces her to be tough, not to spoil her children or herself. Only in this way can we live our days. Luo Saiping's guess is 90% accurate, and Zhao Wendo did not expect the outcome. Whether the teacher is angry or not is not within her consideration. The task at hand is not to continue studying, but how to pass this warm winter. After the explanation, Zhao Wendo went straight home, took the sickle and rope used for chopping firewood, carried a pot of water on his back, and simply tidied up. He followed the Guo family out of the village. Belongli village is a typical small mountain village in the north, where you can see hills of all sizes when looking up near the village. The two nearby mountains are Dongshan and Nanshan, with Nanshan being steep and steep, while Dongshan is more comfortable and gentle. The firewood used for burning is divided into three types here. The adult thick wood is chopped and unloaded into several pieces, and the axe is chopped from the middle to form half of the firewood. It is resistant to burning and has high temperatures, making it the best firewood for winter heating. Of course, it also requires the most effort, with few strong men working together, and coupled with suitable transportation vehicles, it is almost impossible to transport it down the mountain. Two types, thick sticks with a diameter of 3 to 5 centimeters, cut and sawn into sections, neat and not occupying space, and burn for a long time. The third type is low and short shrubs with thin and thick fingers, collectively known as branch firewood, which is easy to cut but not resistant to burning, and is more convenient to transport. In winter, most of the firewood stacks prepared by households are the third type of branch firewood, followed by stick firewood, and half of the firewood is chopped the least. When the villagers say they want to go up the mountain to chop firewood, they mostly refer to getting these branches of firewood. Zhao Wendo's uphill chopping this time is like this, and the Guo family and his wife will also chop some firewood with their spare strength. After all, with the presence of the Guo family man, this kind of physical labor is not a problem. The southern and eastern mountains are not far from the village, and compared to the former, the trees are more lush and there is more firewood. It's just that the snow is deep and the road is slippery in winter, so there's no need to take that risk for a few bundles of firewood. After all, this stick of firewood can be found on any mountain, and these households in the village cannot finish cutting it all. 
Of course, it is the one that is easy to choose. In winter, the mountains are covered in a vast expanse of white. It snowed heavily just now, and the unmoved mountain road was covered in snow to the ankles. The Guo family pitted Zhao Wendo for his young age and being a girl's family. They started by walking in front of her and asked her to step on her feet in the back. Even so, halfway up the mountain, Zhao Wendo's short-cut cotton shoes, which were not thick enough, were already filled with snow. Miss San, the trees here are quite dense. You can chop them here, and Uncle Guo and I will walk up the mountain again. Guo Kai Wizen stopped and said. Well, okay, then I'll chop here. You guys go up. Fix these trees in one place and gather them together. If you cut them down, I won't be able to cut them down. If it delays time, I won't be able to do any work. The trees on the hill are slightly thicker and have a longer path to walk. Zhao Wendo knows that this is to understand her small and weak body and take care of her. If there's anything, just call out to us. It's not far away and you can hear it with a single voice, Guo Huiren said. Zhao Wendo nodded and watched as the two continued up the mountain. He turned around and looked around. Most of the trees growing on Dongshan Mountain are short, with Morina and oak trees accounting for most of them. They don't grow for many years and will surpass the height of a person's head. Each gray-skinned bald branch is dotted with a few withered brown leaves, standing straight in the snow, about the size of a thumb. Cutting firewood and grass is not considered a technical job. Even if you haven't eaten pork, you have seen pigs walking. As long as you can lower the standing tree stick, it will be a good thing. The problem is, how to lay it down, where a tree should be cut off, close to the ground, or the waist section. It seems like a simple question, but it varies from person to person. Zhao Wendo's time here is not too long, and he has only heard of chopping firewood from others, and has never seen it with his own eyes. And this point has been ignored by everyone around them. They believe that small things like chopping firewood and grass are not worth teaching themselves. Even three. Year. Old children know about things, and they don't even think about explaining them. Fortunately, I worked with Zhao Weining for a while yesterday, and overall I have gained some understanding. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Ability. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 Ability Zhao Wendo held a Morina stick in his hand, and his right sickle gestured up and down twice. Recalling the distance and feel of yesterday, he no longer hesitated. About two centimeters off the ground, he took out the snowy nest and swung his knife down, causing the stick to break in response. At present, Zhao Wendo did not know that this kind of Morina wood is extremely hard. Even adults of this thickness need three or two knives to cut it, while those with slightly less strength need to be counted. Even if a young girl of her age has more strength than a child of the same age, and the sickle is sharpened rapidly, she still needs to cut it in one go. This kind of wood not only needs more strength, but also needs to be fast, accurate, and tough, and can be considered an experienced job. For a general who has gone up the mountain twice to chop firewood and grass, it is almost impossible for him to do so with one knife and one tree. Fortunately, there were not every two people around at this moment, otherwise it would definitely be a surprise. With such a chopping technique, the whole thing would be a skilled and experienced worker. With the first knife, followed by the second, third, and fourth knives, each wooden tree was constantly being chopped down. After all, it has been honed on the construction site, and having a sharp eye is completely effortless. At the beginning, those two attempts were just trying to feel the hand. Once you master the trick, it becomes more and more convenient to cut. After a while, the surrounding wooden trees were all knocked down, leaving a fairly large open space. Zhao Wendo first put down his sickle, drew a few thinner and softer ting sticks, and neatly arranged the chopped firewood yards, tying them into bundles and stacking them. After taking a glance, I chopped about 30.5 or 6 bundles, according to Litsuasian standards, these can burn for a month. It seems like something's wrong. 
Zhao Wendo looked up at the sun in the sky and estimated that it would be around 8 or 9 o'clock at this time. If he continued to chop at this speed, there would be two to three hundred bundles of firewood in the evening. Not to mention, it would be enough for two winters. No, it's definitely not right. Zhao Wendo recalled the tone of Li Tsuasian's voice when he said he was chopping firewood last night. What she meant was that she could chop enough firewood today and couldn't hold on until the Chinese New Year. Counting the days, it's only a few months before the Chinese New Year, and a bundle of firewood a day is just so much in front of us. Zhao Wendo realized what had gone wrong. At her current age, she was afraid that she would not be able to reach this speed. It was because she accidentally used too much force and cut down too much firewood. I didn't pay much attention to these details when I first started yesterday, and Zhao Weining didn't mention it in this aspect. Plus, the short time didn't show it, so I didn't think about it. It's really not her carelessness. Who could have thought of this question? This is still her lowest achievement. This small body is still too immature, both in terms of strength and toughness, it needs to be exercised well. It was precisely because of such thoughts that she was momentarily careless, completely oblivious to the idea of not being able to measure her current self based on past standards. Even though the villagers know that the three girls from the Zhao family are stronger than their peers, there is always a standard for whether they are not as strong as adults. If they are slightly stronger, they will be better, and if they are more, they will be terrifying. Anything that stands out too much always makes people feel uneasy, and they don't want to be dissected in the laboratory. They need to be extra careful. Zhao Wendo is also decisive. Once he realizes this, he immediately stops. I looked around and didn't see anyone coming. Then I patted the snow on my hands and walked up the mountain step by step. The Guo family and his wife were chopping hard when they looked up and saw Zhao Wendo coming up from halfway up the mountain. Xiu Huijian straightened up and shouted at her, Third miss, are you tired of chopping? Come up and rest for a while. Zhao Wendo was originally planning his own little plan, but upon hearing her shout, he immediately said, Hmm, I'm a bit tired. Come up and take some air. At your young age, it's not good for you to be able to do this job. Don't work too hard and make yourself tired, it's a lifelong thing. When you're tired, take a break, eat something, drink water. Yes, I know. Zhao Wendo raised the kettle in his hand to the front and waved it at the two of them. Well, I'm carrying water and it's still warm. Do you want to drink some? Although it was a thoughtful and intimate conversation, what she said was very unnatural, and her address was also very vague. Xiu Hui didn't mind at all, pursed his lips and said happily to Guo Huiren, look at these three girls who are quite thoughtful. They have brought up all the water. Guo Huiren knew what she was happy about, so he grinned and said to Zhao Wenduo, you silly girl, can you go up the mountain to chop firewood without bringing water? We brought two big jars here. Just now, your aunt Guo said whether you want to go down and see if your water is enough to drink. So, you came up first and asked us both. Zhao Wendo didn't know they were carrying water, so he found an excuse to come up and investigate the situation. The two of them laughed and said a few words as if they were joking, which was in line with her heart. He made the right move and followed with a silly smile. He looked around calmly and saw the piles of firewood, saying, Are these all chopped today? He roughly counted them, which was similar to the number of bundles she was bowing. Yeah, they were all cut at this moment. And how many bundles did you cut? Xiu Huijian went to take a sip of water and handed it to Guo Huiren, asking him to stop and rest. Zhao Wendo chuckled and said awkwardly, I haven't cut a few bundles yet, not even half of them. That's not true. This is the result of both you and Uncle Guo. Xiu Huijian widened her eyes and said, How much more do you want to chop, little girl? If you can chop ten or twenty bundles this day, it's good. Don't try to work hard, you haven't grown into a human yet. If you're tired again, it won't be worth it. Yes, I got it, take it easy to do it. Zhao Wendo drank water, looked educated, 
and chatted with the two of them a few more times, feeling that time was running out. He patted his butt and left the hill. Xiu Huijian looked at her thin and dry figure as she left and sighed, it's really not easy. At such a young age, I can go up the mountain and chop firewood. Even a young man wouldn't change it. Guo Huiren said, these girls from the Zhao family are all pretty good. They can work, they look good, and they are all sensible. No, the eldest girl is silly and capable, and the second girl is beautiful and skilled. I didn't think these three girls were outstanding before, but now they seem to be able to endure hardship and live a good life. It's just that they don't have a sweet mouth, and when they meet people, they don't know how to call each other big or small. I've been nagging for a while but I haven't seen her call her uncle or auntie. It's always been difficult for you and your listeners to listen well. Don't pick on those things. Sweet mouth things don't necessarily mean good. You can appreciate it if you just talk and don't do any work. It's better if you don't know how to say sweet things. Honest people are good. Hi, I didn't say that Miss San is bad either, it's just that I think she's not sweet and can easily suffer losses. Can you talk and listen to her mother who even says she won't listen to you? That's true. Yesterday, I heard Li Tsuasian's call sign, saying that these three girls deserve to be beaten up and don't know how to call them, mom. My parents are not happy to call them out, let alone others. Look at me, these three girls are either not shouting, or they are naturally clumsy and can't say anything nice. You see, she was quite close to us just now and even wanted to bring water, but she doesn't know what to call, so it's probably not intentional, it's just her personality. Guo Huiren nodded and said, this person is not perfect. Everyone has their own shortcomings. This girl is still young, and it's enough to understand the cold weather at home when Tianer comes up the mountain to chop firewood. If you want to call her, don't call her. Just understand what kind of personality she is. It's not about getting married or picking up so many things, it's useless. Xiu Huijian gave him a blank glance and said, you have very little imagination. You three kids haven't even married a wife yet. I don't think much about it, can I? If I only point to your carelessness, when will I be able to find a wife for my son? You have also mentioned these girls from the Zhao family, but they are all quite good. It's good to marry any of them and go home. Yes, Zhao Mingyu and these girls are all good, but not a single one we can marry back home. The eldest Zhao Weining and Luo Yubao are arranged as a child, and both families have passed the Ming Road. It will be easy to obtain a certificate in the past year and six months. Besides, Zhao Wenlan is a formal worker in the embroidery factory, and there are not many people from the three villages with good conditions. They can take a liking to those three young boys in our family. And these three girls, who are good at thinking, studying, and sensible, can still work, but they are really too young at this age. They are eight or nine years behind our third. That's not to mention, the difference is even greater. Ah, uh, I can't remember it anymore. Xiu Huijian sighed and said, You said this good girl is right under your nose, why isn't there a suitable one? Guo Huiren said, Don't think about it. Hurry up and chop the firewood and grass. Children and grandchildren have their own blessings. Let those three kids handle it on their own. You're such a good person, you don't need us to make arrangements. You can get a daughter dot in dot law yourself, maybe even better than this Xiao girl. If that's really the case, then I'll burn high incense. Xiao Huijian stood up happily, spat twice, and then started working. End of this chapter